Battle Arena Toshinden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Revelations Persona, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and Wild Arms. These are the 20 games that will be present on the PlayStation Classic. These are the rest of the games that have been announced. Uh, last time I talked about it, I only had knowledge of 5 games. So I was kind of wary whether this Classic system would be worth it. Is it worth the $100 price tag? Now when it comes to the overall economic value, if you want to just talk about whether it's worth it to pick up a PlayStation console along with these 20 games and compare the prices, this one's going to beat you hands down, mostly because of two games that kind of make it unfair, but this is going to be uh, being. So if you want these 20 games specifically, these 20 games, it is better for you to buy the PlayStation Classic and an AC adapter because it still doesn't come with one. Now, there is an advantage to buying the PlayStation Classic, and that's mostly the HDMI setup. If you want to play your classic PlayStation console, not the PlayStation Classic, I should specify, but if you want to play your PlayStation 1 uh, on your HDMI compatible TV where it doesn't have composite, you need a converter, which is sometimes hard to come by and sometimes confusing if you don't know what you're doing. So this is a great step, uh, an easy step, a workaround, so to say, for people that are unwilling to do it. This connects to your HDMI TV pretty easy, probably similar to the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. But I want to talk about what all these games are worth. So I went on eBay and I looked everything up. I knew what some of these were worth. I mean, I saw Revelations Persona and I was like, whoa. Whoa, that's way too expensive of a title in comparison to the rest of these. And I looked it up, be sure. I thought it was around $50. It is actually around $80. Revelations Persona, find a loose copy. A loose copy is about $80. So you've already pretty much made most of the $100 price tag right there. You add in Wild Arms, Final Fantasy VII, and... I don't know, one of the other games doesn't really matter and you've come up with the $100 price tag without tax. If you want to add another one, you can. Now, of course, there's a few other expensive ones on here. Jumping Flash is somewhat expensive. Usually it goes for about 15 loose. Uh, another one is, well, Wild Arms, I already said, goes for about 13, 15 around there. Metal Gear Solid goes for 10. Intelligent Cube goes for about 30. And I think that's all the expensive ones. Resident Evil Director's Cut is about 10. And the rest of them are below 10, pretty much. So you do get your money's worth. If you just want these 20 games, go ahead and get this. This is actually a fantastic deal if you are just looking to play these games. Though, I'm not sure how excited you are to play Mr. Driller. But apparently it's really fun. I've never played it. I, I should get around to playing it. But, let's talk about the ultimate reason on why you should not be getting this and it is not that it doesn't come with an ac adapter that is a slight inconvenience it's not the fact that these games are bad heck final fantasy 7 has a huge audience the original grand theft auto is huge well it's not it's more of a name thing but whatever uh resident evil director's cut very good Revelations Persona. Persona is a huge series now. It might be cool to jump back, though it's not what it is nowadays. Please be sure to remember that. Tekken 3, a great fighting game. Twisted Metal is always a fun game, though I'm kind of confused on why they went with the first one over the second. But maybe something happened, or maybe they were like, let's just put the first one in. Probably the second one would have done better. But the ultimate reason, if you really want to shut down this console is that they are inflating the economic value of each game on average by including such outliers as Persona and Intelligent Cube. Because if you look at most of these games, most of these are $5 and under. 
I, I'm actually going to count real quick. You have Battle Arena Toshiden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Grand Theft Auto, uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. You have seven of your 20 that are under $5. Then there are several that are barely over it, such as Rayman, or Final Fantasy 7. These are all loose prices, by the way. The loose disc without the case. Uh, Ridge Racer is also 7, I believe. Uh, Twisted Metal also. So you have about 4 there. So you have 11 that are straight up under 10. I think Mr. Driller's 9. Uh, so you have about 12 that are straight up under $10. And that's fine. To be honest, you're getting $100 for the ability to play these games. But you also have to remember... For the general audience, you are not going to hack this or mod it to where you can play other games. People are just going to get this. They're going to put it down in front of their child and they're not going to mess with it ever again. They're going to hold the child's attention for a while and that'll be it. Or they might play it with their children. Depends on the parent. But overall, when it comes to the use of this, if you were a somewhat... Not serious, but a somewhat regular gamer. It would be better for you to buy a PlayStation 1 and then buy the games you would want here. It is seriously just better. I mean, a lot of this is very inconsistent because you have a fighting game. You have several racing games. You have Cool Borders 2, which no one should play. Pro Skater is better, in my opinion, for your skating needs because it's pretty much the same thing i don't care if it's a snowboard it's really not that fun uh you have plenty of destruction games destruction derby and twisted metal do you really need to probably not and all i'm saying is there are some games you're missing out here yeah you're getting rayman and yeah you're getting jumping flash for your platformer but you're missing out on spyro missing out on crash on the original hardware so you are missing out on some stuff by instead going for the classic console now that's not to say you can't have both because i might pick it up Shh, i'm not sure but overall when it comes to the price analysis this is not as good as the nes classic or the snes classic so let, let's just take a comparison real quick on the other classic systems because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to compare the deal here. Are you getting a good deal? To be honest, all three classics are a decent deal. But let's get to the PlayStation Classic. So, for the NES Classic, if you look at the averages, a lot of these games go for higher than $10. There are a few low outliers such as Excite Bike, the original Super Mario Brothers. Uh, I'm trying to think of another one that's pretty low. I think, no, I think... The original Donkey Kong is actually still a decent price. But overall, most of them are over $10. Uh, there are a few low ones that bring the average down. It's about $10 a game. So you have to think about the game. Game's on there. There's 30 games, so it's about $300 right there. Of course, you're paying $60. So it's a great deal. Now, the SNES Classic has a lower amount of games. Now... I, I left to Earthbound out because that, that's a high one, but I left Earthbound out for this. But a lot of them go for 20 or they go for a little lower in maybe 12, 15 range. And of course, there's a few games that go below 10. But overall, they're, they're pretty steadfast in their approach. And also, Star Fox 2 is not available, available anywhere else. So you have to think eh, about $15 a game without Earthbound. And then you add Earthbound and it'll go up, of course. That's what you get when you have an outlier. But we'll say about $15 a game and you have 21 games. So you can do the math there. It's actually a pretty good deal. Now the PlayStation Classic has less games than both of them. You have 20 games with Persona. This is with the huge outlier involved. It's $12.50 a game. It's actually not that bad. It's still a reasonable deal. Uh, you're still getting your money's worth, but if you take out Persona, you are at about $8.50, and yes, I did take out 
persona. That means I did how much each is worth and then I divided by 19. Okay, I did do the correct math. But and then you also take out the other the other outlier intelligent cube and you get seven dollars and seventy five cents or eight dollars if we want to round up evenly. Now, if you look at that, let, let's say we just leave Persona in there at $12.50. So $12.50 per game, it beats NES Classic in dollar amount per game, but it doesn't beat how many games are on the console. So it loses there. And the SNES Classic wins on the averages of 15 and it also has more games by one star fox 2 though if you don't count it it still wins on average so overall it's technically in an epic economic point of view it is technically a worse classic console than the nes classic and the snes classic depending on the economic view whether you enjoy the games or not is opinionated I enjoy the SNES way more, but that's my opinion. Excuse me. But when it comes to overall the rarity of these games, this is where a lot of these games are going to kind of shine. Persona is very rare. I've seen very not that many copies. Let's just be honest. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is very common. Uh... Overall, I've seen plenty of different cho like different choices. Do you want the greatest hits version? Do you want this version? There are like three versions versions floating around. Three versions, three versions floating around. It's not that hard. Intelligent Cube is quite rare. Metal Gear Solid is getting rarer as the years go on. Resident Evil Director's Cut, of course, is always being snatched up. Um, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six has a following, and so those are kind of rare-ish they're more uncommon same with wild arms wild arms is actually more on the rare side but a lot of these are common like cool borders 2 is very common i'll go through cds sometimes and see destruction derby or grand theft auto or um mr driller i'll see these sometimes very not every day i go to swap meet but very commonly it's not like they're hidden now, the original Rayman, of course, is picked up by platformers everywhere. It's kind of recognizable at this point. So, eh. But when it comes to the classic versus on rarity, when we're talking about the rarity of each game versus each other, when it comes to the different generations, because you have to think about it this way, the PlayStation came out later than the NES and the SNES. So, by extension, there were less games on the NES made for that game. But, for example, this is an insane example. If a game came out on the NES, 10,000 copies were made. The SNES, 20,000 copies were made. PlayStation 1, 50,000 copies were made. That's the example of what we're dealing with. Because, overall, more people were getting into gaming, more people were buying games, and they're, in fact means there's more out there overall it's hard to find an earthbound for cheap or even an earthbound in the wild just like finding it it's only at conventions or in video game stores you're gonna find one ebay stuff like that but every now and then you'll come across the persona you'll come across revelations persona maybe in a cd rack they thought it was a cd Maybe they put in their CD player, it didn't work, they were like, screw it. But overall, it's it's not even in the rarity scale. Now, I do want to talk about the fact you can completely avoid this issue if you already own a PlayStation 1, but I want to highlight something. If you are a PS2 owner, I really hope you know this, but the PS2 is backwards compatible with the PlayStation 1. All you need is a PS1 memory card and, well, the PS or the PlayStation game. So let's say I want to play Metal Gear Solid. I get a copy of that. I have my PS2 hooked up. I have a PS1 memory card. I put it in and I put the disc in and I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's actually what they did for 
the uh, series collection for the PS2 for Metal Gear Solid, instead of using uh, a new disc for PlayStation 2, they just use the PlayStation 1. All you do is Metal Gear Solid, you just need a PS1 memory card, which is kind of a dick move, but besides the point. So, if you have a PS2, completely skip out on this deal. If you have a PlayStation 1 already, uh, skip out on this deal too. It's not, it's not really that good. Now, if you are really looking for RPGs to play, you've run out of RPG options, I can actually highly recommend this. Wild Arms, fantastic. Final Fantasy VII, of course, is always good. And Re Revelations Persona is quite rare. Though there is a PSP remake, so to say, of it. But overall, if you're an RPG fan, definitely think about it. If you're any type of other genre fan, this is not worth it. Platformers, there's not that many good platformers here. Rayman's one. Uh, Jumping Flash is uh, opinionated and I have a negative one on it. Uh, if you want to talk about shooters, Siphon Filter has a huge following. Same with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Uh, they're, they're decent. Uh, you have some horror and Resident Evil Director's Cut. Though you're missing out on Resident Evil 2. So it, it'd probably be better just to get a PlayStation 4 or save up with the $100 and get a PS4. And then buy Resident Evil 1 Remastered along with Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 Remake coming out soon. Overall, I'm not that let down by this. I had very low expectation, obviously, from the other video. Uh, but they did pull out some surprises here. I was surprised by Revelations Persona being here. I, that was one of the last games from my mind. It's It really was one of the last games i also did not expect metal gear solid even though i kind of wanted it but they brought it too which is good that's if i could think of five games for the playstation the original playstation to bring to my grave it goes twisted metal 2 that's that's more my my choice there but twisted metal 2 final fantasy 7 metal gear solid resident evil 2 and I'm forgetting the one I was going to say. Uh, what what was I going to say? Now I'm mad. Maybe a pro skater game? I don't think that was it. But when it comes down to it, uh, it's a decent deal. Overall, I'd probably say it's not the best classic console out there. And overall, they could have probably done better with their choice of games. Pro skater game could have gone far touch the nostalgia make sure you get people hooked they didn't do that great of a job there uh a lot of these are good games i hear mr drill is good i'm if i ever get one that'll be the first thing i try just because i've never played it and i heard it's great but overall i kind of want to know what you guys think with these games is there one on here that made you oh man pre-order now it, how do you feel about this do you feel like they made a correct choice with intelligent cube did you feel like oh man i must buy it with De destruction derby on there what what is your take on this do you think it's worth the hundred dollar price tag or do you find that maybe this wasn't that great of a christmas gift because this does come out december 3rd so again playstation classic uh you can see more stuff around the web i'm sure and overall uh, the 20 games, I've already said them, and yeah, you can uh, pick one up if you want. Make sure you pre-order it. You might lose out on day one. Some people like to snatch up classic consoles and put them on eBay immediately, but uh, make sure you pre-order if you are interested in this. Do not let this slip through your fingers if you're a PlayStation fan. Uh, overall, uh, I'm going to leave that with it with what i just said uh i hope to see you guys next time i'll probably pick another topic that does not include sony because i've talked about it twice and we've only on only been here three times so yeah so i hope to see you guys next time and have a great day and of course till then